Today, by popular demand, I've got a brand new custom tripod. This is a little something different for me, a three pound, six ounce featherweight travel tripod. I will share all the specs and details. Well, hey everyone, welcome. Uh, so this week, I've got a new tripod to talk about. And it, uh, for anybody who knows me well, I'm pretty darn picky uh, when it comes to tripods and camera support. You know, I want something that doesn't get in my way. It actually makes my life easier. And that has led me to really eschew what most people will refer to as the travel tripod for years. Uh, and, and you know, anyone who knows me knows my preference is to use this tall set of legs. Uh, I have a set back there against the wall at their full height. They get to 80 inches. Um, or really close to it with a fluid head. I just find the precision and ease of composition plus the ability to work like a gimbal or a video head, you know, you name it, the fluid head kind of does everything for me. Uh, I, I love using this system whenever I can and it'll be on my back for serious photography situations when I'm carrying all my gear, you know, even if that's on short trips into the mountains or something, this, this system only weighs less than seven pounds. I know everybody who ever picks it up is shocked when they do, you know, they pick up my custom set or they buy one from me and they have a look, you know, I've got a little postal scale right here and it's weighing in at six pounds, 12 ounces, um, which is, you know, shockingly light for the system, but it's big, it's large, it's bulky. And six pounds, 12 ounces is six pounds, 12 ounces. I had a number of people tell me, it's just too much for me in my type of photography practice, and, and that's why I built the ultralight pan and tilt uh, custom tripod system that I use using the, the, um, the, the, the Leo Photo built-in leveling adapter legs so that you can get that 30 degrees of tilt and Acrotex, you know, one pound panoramic head that holds 25 pounds. It's, it's a really beautiful little system, and I've used it a lot on trips, say I'm doing a backcountry ski trip, uh, and it, every ounce matters, or you know, I'm, I'm going a little lighter on gear on a bigger trip with other things in mind, but I want a good tripod with me, and I want that, that simplicity uh, of the pan and tilt system to be just nice and precise with a leveling adapter beneath. Well, you know, I've had a lot of people, many of my workshop clients purchase, some of them have both of these heads for different purposes. Some people choose the smaller head, some people choose, or the smaller system, some people want the bigger system. You know, they're a couple of pounds different. They're significantly different in their, in their mass and size when you're carrying them. But I still get a group of people who show up with the traditional travel tripod. They want it to fit in the carry-on bag. They want it to be ultra, ultra small, and I'm frequently uh, really disappointed by the performance. Even some of the carbon fiber, really fancy, very expensive name brand you'd recognize tripods that I see, which, you know, when I try to help someone use them, I find super frustrating. You know, you go to tighten the head and then it droops when you take your hands off the camera. Uh, those kinds of things drive me crazy. It's just not heavy duty enough to use in serious work. So I set about a few months ago building what I'm calling the featherweight travel tripod. I went through a number of different sets of legs from my favorite leg builder, Leo Photo. Um, I went through a number of heads. I, I absolutely love this new little miniature Acrotec GXP head, the, the GXP SS. And yes, it's a ball head, but I'll tell you why I love it for this system. Um, and for me, I, I've been playing around with it and using it uh, since the fall workshops that I ran last year. Now, obviously, I brought my big set of legs as well, but I've been playing around with, you know, what are the capabilities of this thing? If you're in a pinch and every ounce matters or you wind up in a situation where, well, maybe I might need a tripod and you're on a family trip or something like that. And I think I've come up with a system that that is the best possible compromise for ultra lightweight. This thing is weighing in at wait for it, less than three pounds, six ounces. Three pounds, 5.9 ounces. Um, it is truly, truly featherweight. It's got four sections. It gets relatively tall. You know, I'll, I'll expand it out so you can see 
just how tall and practice I'm. I'm just, I'm five foot 11 and three quarters. My wife frequently teases me, you know, I can't say six feet, but um, so I'm, I'm about an average height guy, maybe a little taller than some. And <clears throat> when I set up, it gets to right about here. You know, if I was to say drop my like a Q2 in there, which I could see myself traveling with just this camera and this set of legs in a book bag. Um, I, I lean in just a little. I'm not stooping, I'm not bending at the knee, but I'm leaning in a little bit to get my eye to the viewfinder. It's a compromise, right? Um, it has a built-in leveling adapter that gives you about 15 degrees of leveling that's, that's part of this head. It's a simple little lever. It's got a nice bubble level right here on the side that you can easily see to get the base of your head level. Now you're panning level because you've leveled from beneath. The Acrotech GXP SS model that I'm using has this just amazing lever clamp. This is my favorite lever clamp on the planet. You can adjust its grab for different sized Arca Swiss rails and L brackets with this little knob right here. It has a locking clamp lever that won't come undone unless you hit that button on the edge. It's kind of like a, a lock blade knife that way. And it has this huge, easy to read bubble level that sticks out so that you can see it even when your camera is on board. So one of the first things I love about this system, oh, I, don't have a, I don't have my Arca Swiss plate on my Z50. Um, you gotta open it, drop it in there. Nice uh, center gauge. I have a look here at that bubble level, and now I'm level below and above. So if I pan, I'm panning perfectly level. That can be handy if you're in a situation wanting to shoot a panorama with a ball head. You still can get a nice level pan without even doing any of the cool stuff that this head's capable of. Like you can pull the clamp off the top of this head, mount it on the bottom and mount it on the top of the tripod inverted so you can easily pan level, but you don't need to do that with this particular set of legs because you've got this built-in leveling adapter in the legs. The legs, like any really good set of carbon legs, have, you know, they, they pull out and they've got a three position uh, set so that you can go all the way flush to the ground given that it doesn't have anything sticking out from beneath. No center column, no leveling adapter handle down there, um, but it also gets nice and tall. So, you know, you pull that guy off, and, and this is really the situation that I would consider using this featherweight travel tripod. It's when, you know, I'm traveling with my family and I wanna just be super small, super light, maybe all I've got's my Leica Q2 or I've got it and a Z50 and a couple of lenses. I'm going really light and I want the tripod to be light too. Um, the other cool thing about the GXP line, and it's true of the full-size GXP, which holds 50 pounds, as well as this GXP SS, which holds 35 pounds and weighs well under a pound, believe it or not. Well, there's a couple of cool things. Um, it has three knobs on it. That the, the smaller knob that has a kind of an O-ring around it is for base tension adjustment. If I loosen that and I have it loose, all of a sudden, it just goes fully floppy. A slight amount of turning that knob and all of a sudden you set your base tension where now my Q2, I can move it and it won't flop no matter what I do with it. I turn this big knurled knob, boom, it's locked. I can't move it at all. You know, and this set of legs, this Leo Photo 255 CES set of legs is rated for something like 13.6 pounds, but I'm telling you, like I, I've been sort of using it to press and hop on and I don't feel any flex, any movement. You know, that's me putting at least 60 or 70 pounds of pressure on there. It feels just rock solid, even with its lowest leg sections deployed. And it's not, it's just not moving. It's a really, really nice set of legs. Now, if you wanna get even solider, you know, like any of my custom tripods that I sell, we take all the threads of these connector sections and, and grease them so they're, so they're pre-greased, perfectly updone. They're wrapped with really nice cork road bike grip tape. We've got a, strick of hop, a strip of hockey tape we're putting underneath now, underneath that, that road bike grip tape, and we're sealing it with silicone tape for a nice finished look. But the included stone bag, I always include a stone bag, and that, whatever tripod you're using, I think that one of these stone bags, I had Leo Photo build one with a hook 
incorporated into the bottom of it. So it also functions as a tripod hook. Got this nice little hook that can grab your bag's handle. Um, you put this stone bag on here and all of a sudden your three pound, six ounce tripod, and we try to set these, these little knurled bits so that it's easy to get stones in. It's kind of the perfect position without interfering at all with the ability to go vertical with your tripod or to go all the way to the ground. You know, now we've got a hook down below and I've got, you know, pretty fully loaded my favorite photo backpack, my Naya Evo 60C. If I take that and just slip its carry handle, its grab handle into the hook, now all of a sudden I've just hung, I don't know, probably 35 pounds from this tripod and we are, we are anchored. Now all of a sudden you can shoot in the wind and, and nothing is moving even with this ultralight setup. You can drop sand in here, you can put a sandbag in, you can drop some big stones uh, if you're down by a river or something. And with yourself rooted like this, suddenly the other feature of this Acrotech GXP head, the GXP SS is just like its big brother, it has a built-in gimbal function. If, if you look at the bottom of the ball, there's a little pin that sticks out from it and there's a notch that that drops into on the frame of the head and then the collar of the ball head drops in on the other side so they're balanced, the weight's distributed. And you can literally, you know, this isn't the head I'd recommend for this in general, but let's say suddenly, you know, this is the only tripod you got around and you've got some wildlife that you're looking at and you want to slap your Z9 with your 100 to 400 on here. Well, now the, the, the Q2's base tension is insufficient, all right? So that's where, you know, we loosen our, our tripod pan and get our knobs around to us. And we turn that little O-ring knob until suddenly the base tension set appropriately for this head for the Z9 with the 100 to 400. And that's pretty astounding. As I said, this head is rated for 35 pounds. And I would think that with my photo bag, this head, this lens, this camera, we're starting to push the, the tripod's weight limits, but I don't see any bow to the legs and it seems rock solid. So now you can actually loosen that guy a little bit, drop it over. I'd rather it be on this side for myself personally. And you've got a gimbal like scenario. Now I have to stoop down a little bit, but you see I've got myself into a situation where I can, I can gimbal this follow action as if I were on a gimbal. Um, and this thing's rated, I think a 400, uh, a 400 2.8. So pretty, pretty amazing little head, you know, for a 3.6 pound option. We come back up and I loosened that a little bit for the gimbling. Push that lock button on the clamp, off we come. Again, the scenario I would more highly recommend is just having this guy along with you, you know, on a family trip. You can keep the stone bag in there just in case you want it for something. It's easy to deploy, it's just Velcro. But the ability to just toss this in carry-on bag for the plane, heck, you know, take the head off and put it in a book bag. Um, I, I carried it in a little book bag into the Portland Japanese Gardens last month. I didn't figure, I just had my Q2 and I was there with my kids and I didn't figure I'd need a tripod. But by just taking a small Allen wrench and loosening the three little set screws that go through the leveling adapter into the head, the head spins off. You don't need to over tighten the head onto the tripod either because you've got these three little set screws that drive up diagonally into the base of the head. You just spin it on there snug, spin those snug, not too tight, and all of a sudden it's locked on there. You can't possibly remove it. So all in all, a very professional little travel tripod. Now again, as always, you can, you can find this at hudsonhenry.com slash tripods. I have all my recommended tripods and accessories there. You can find links to all the gear that I use and recommend over at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links. If you use those links going out to some of my affiliate partners, they help me out and I really appreciate it for supporting the content that I, that I produce for this channel. If you have questions about this little guy, hit me up. I'm also selling it as a bare set of legs. So if you were to buy this system as a custom tripod from me, 
it would come with the with the custom cork, really nice feeling grip, uh, road bike grip tape wrapped around the hockey uh, tape bolts to be able to to drop the stone bag from it. It comes with the stone bag. All the joints are greased. It's all pre-assembled and it's in this nice little bag along with uh, a set of tools that come with Leo Photo with those legs and a tiny little set of spikes for using it in the sand. It doesn't come with the panoramic uh, no, uh, nodal rail that I normally put with the bigger tripod systems. It doesn't come with the rock claws or the big modular uh, spiked feet, which don't fit on these smaller um, little tiny legs. But um, man, for a small tripod, this guy's a winner, and I've been having fun carrying it around. You know, sometimes the best gear is what you have with you. And let's face it, you can't carry this guy everywhere you go with you. So, you know, I, I picture myself taking this as the only tripod I bring to Cuba. You know, I'm probably going to bring my Z9 with an 85 1.2 if Nikon ever releases that lens, or my 105 1.4 on the FTZ adapter my Q2 and a 51.8. And that's probably gonna be all that I bring on that trip. You know, it's mainly gonna be street photography and handheld, uh, but for those times when I wanna use a tripod, this little lightweight guy is gonna be my tripod. It's also gonna be the tripod that I carry if I do a backcountry ski trip in the Cascade Mountains this winter with my friends, um, just to stay as light as possible where every single ounce counts. Um, so we're also selling these as a bare set of legs, just the 255 legs. They come uh, in this nice case. The tripod fits with the head on it in this little carrying case. Um, so, and it also would have those same set of tools and the, the little spikes with it. So there you go. That's the new setup. Uh, if you have questions about it, hit me up. Uh, I'm always happy to talk anything camera tripod support <laughs> related. It's, it's been a passion of mine for, for decades now. You know, I figure most people spend $1,000 on the wrong camera support gear before they finally get serious and figure out what they actually need. So I'm really happy to, to have this as a third option for those that need something even yet lighter. Uh, quick announcement before I sign off, we're going to have office hours, uh, big free photography get together, be on Zoom and YouTube Live. It's going to be December 13th. It's a Tuesday, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. And we'll be talking about some resolutions, some goals, setting goals for yourself for the next year. You know, we're coming to the end of 2022, starting off 2023. Uh, it's time to think about what you'd like to accomplish in your photography over the coming year. What are some goals? What are some thoughts? How can you take your practice to that next level? We'll be taking your questions. We'll be having a group discussion. You know, Woody, Darren, Rick, uh, David, and I. So I hope you'll join us too. Again, submit a question when you sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Also, just a little heads up be picking out your best photo of 2022. We're gonna be doing a, a gallery critique contest uh, for January, where we look back at the best photos of the year from 2022, and we'll give out some cool, some cool gifts to those that we deem the best. Or, you know, we'll, There's at least gonna be one winner, and we're looking at something from maybe Naya Evo backpacks or case filters, so. Stay tuned for that. That announcement will be coming uh, after the office hours on the 13th. All right, and just one more word. We're putting up workshops quickly in the uh, website. So run over to hudsonhenry.com slash workshops, uh, and you can see them as they go live. You can also sign up for advance notice if you see some coming for 2023 that you'd really like to get into. Uh, we have a lot of people signed up for advanced interest, and, and I fear some may sell out before they even go live and get announced via email. So... Jump over there if you're interested. We have so much fun and we always make tons of friends and learn a lot on these adventures in spectacular places. So it's my favorite thing I've ever done. So I hope you'll join me for one. All right, everyone, that's it for this week. I hope you're enjoying this holiday season. I know that my family and I gorged ourselves over Thanksgiving with the grandparents and just enjoyed our kids and had a ton of fun. I hope you all had a similar experience and you're staying safe staying creative. We'll see you next week.